When I think of mass killings carried out in the USA, there are some incidents that immediately spring to mind. For example, the McDonald's Massacre, Columbine, Virginia Tech, and Luby's Diner. These are all events which at the time shocked and outraged America, and the names of the perpetrators of these crimes live on in infamy. James Huberty, Harris and Klebold, Tsung Hui Cho, and George Hennard. Between them, these killers took 90 innocent lives. And yet, if I told you that there was a man who, in one go, killed almost as many people, you'd imagine that you'd probably know this guy's name. But in fact, most people have never heard of Julio Gonzalez. And maybe that's because instead of using a gun, Gonzalez's weapon of choice was an empty oil can filled with a dollar's worth of gas. The Happy Land Social Club was an informal, uh, that's to say unlicensed, nightclub. It was on the second floor of a fairly run-down building located on Southern Boulevard, East Tremont, which is a mostly residential neighbourhood of the Bronx. On the night of the 25th of March 1990, Happy Land was packed with a young crowd of mostly Honduran immigrants celebrating the annual carnival. However, one man wasn't joining in with the party spirit. 36-year-old Julio Gonzalez, he was too busy having a heated argument with his ex-girlfriend of six years, Lydia Feliciano. Gonzalez had arrived into the US ten years earlier during an event known as the Marielle Boatlift, when large numbers of Cuban citizens who had claimed asylum in the Peruvian embassy in Havana were given the chance to leave Cuba and make new lives in the United States. In total, there were around 125,000 Cubans who fled the Castro regime during the Marielle boat lift. Apparently, old Fidel decided to take advantage of this unprecedented exodus to get rid of a bunch of unwanted prisoners from the overcrowded Cuban prisons. They would just send them off on the boats along with the genuine asylum seekers. Now, Gonzalez had already been in prison for three years for deserting from the Cuban army, and he was more than happy with the opportunity to jump on a boat and start a new life in the US. So he forged a document giving himself a criminal record as a drug dealer, and he was promptly packed off to the United States by the Cuban authorities. Having arrived, he moved to New York and found work packing boxes in a lamp factory in Queens. This was a job that he held down for nearly 10 years, but he lost it in early 1990. By March of 1990, he was behind on his rent, he was unemployed, and his girlfriend had dumped him. And so it was an angry and bitter man who made his way to the Happy Land Social Club that night. Once there, Gonzalez spent most of the night getting drunk and arguing with his ex-girlfriend, Lydia Feliciano, who was working as the coat check girl that night. Having failed to convince her to quit her job and go home with him, Gonzalez became increasingly angry, shouting that if he couldn't have her, then no one would. He was eventually thrown out of the club at around 3 o'clock in the morning. Drunk, angry and feeling belittled, Gonzalez yelled that he would be back to settle the score before stumbling off into the night. As he slouched home, he spotted an empty oil container lying on the ground. And then a thought occurred to him, a terrible thought. Right, he would show her. He would teach all of them not to mess with him. He picked up the can and he wandered over to the local Amoco gas station where he asked for a dollar's worth of gasoline. College freshman Edward Porras was working his first night shift at the Amoco station and he wasn't happy about selling that fuel to Gonzalez. Now, Gonzalez had said he needed it for his car, which had run out of gas, but something seemed off about the guy and his story. Unfortunately, a guy walking past right then recognised Gonzalez and then vouched for him, telling Porras that Gonzalez was a good guy, he's all right. And with those fateful words, Gonzalez got his dollar's worth of gas and went back to the Happy Land Social Club. Now, the Happy Land Club had already been ordered to close down due to numerous safety violations. These included a lack of smoke alarms, there was no sprinkler system, no emergency lighting, and there were no emergency exits. In fact, the entire upper floor had been constructed illegally, with just the rickety wooden staircase leading to it as the only means of entry or exit. 
Although initially ordered to close down in November 1988 and with the owner facing eviction, the club had somehow remained open, without any apparent repercussions from the local authorities. And now, packed into this small, crowded space that had no exits, there were 93 young people just trying to have a good time. When Gonzalez got back to the club at 3.30, almost everyone was upstairs, still dancing and drinking. With no one around to stop him, he splashed the gasoline over the wooden stairs in the entranceway before stepping back, lighting two matches and tossing them into the gas-soaked doorway. He then walked across the street to watch as the club was engulfed in flame. The single stairway acted as a chimney, funneling the flame and the smoke straight upstairs. There was almost no time to react. The toxic smoke began choking and blinding the patrons. Some were overcome so quickly that they were later found still sitting at the tables. Some even still had their drinks in their hands. The only way out was the staircase, and that was completely ablaze. With nowhere to run, people sank to the floor in a last-ditch effort to find oxygen. By the time the fire engines arrived on scene just 10 minutes later, it was already all over. 87 people were dead. All of them from asphyxiation due to smoke inhalation. Firefighter Dennis Devlin, one of the first on the scene, remembered the uncanny silence. There was one lad in the street telling us that there were loads of people inside, trapped, but we couldn't hear anyone. There was no one screaming, there was no one yelling. Of the 93 people inside the club that night, only six managed to escape with their lives. Ironically, amongst them was Gonzalez's intended target, his ex-girlfriend Lydia Feliciano. Gonzalez, having watched the club burn, had then taken the boss home. He knocked on a neighbour's door, told her what he'd done, and then he went to bed in a semi-drunk stupor. When the police arrested him at four o'clock in the afternoon, he was still in bed fast asleep. When confronted, he readily admitted what he'd done, and he went with them without a fuss. The evidence against him was overwhelming. The gas-soaked clothes, his confession to the neighbour, eyewitness reports, and his own confession to the police. He was found guilty, and he was sentenced to two counts of murder and arson for each victim. A total of 174 25-year sentences. This was the longest prison sentence ever handed down in the state of New York. At the time, his 87 victims made him the worst mass murderer in American history. And it was all for nothing. All those people died for no reason. To me, this remains one of the most senseless crimes that I've ever heard of. So much hurt and pain caused to so many people. Over what? The guy had a bruised ego? The guy was going through a bit of a rough patch? It just doesn't make any sense at all. Almost unbelievably, despite receiving the longest prison sentence in New York history, Gonzalez was eligible for parole in 2015. He did indeed apply for parole that year, but was turned down. He died in prison the following year from an apparent heart attack. He was 61, and he had lived to be much older than the vast majority of his victims of the Happy Land Massacre. A memorial stands today, not far from the site of the tragedy. A reminder of the single, senseless act that took the lives of 87 young people who were just out to have a good time.